All right, it is time for the mid-year book tag. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> so we're gonna find out what the best and worst books are so far for this year, along with share some amazing booktube content creators and figure out surprises, excitements, and things that I'm just looking forward to. It'll probably make more sense if we move over to the bookshelves that have all of the books that I've read so far this year, since that's what we're talking about. Okay, here we are where all the magic takes place. <laughs> Kiwi also decided to come hang out. Uh, hopefully she won't get in the way too much. Will ya? Will ya, sweetie pie? All right, let's get into it. I have the questions here in my handy dandy planner. I couldn't find the original video for this. I know so many people have done this over the years now that it's kind of got lost in the sauce. I did get a lot of my questions specifically from Kayla from Books and Lala. So I will have her link down below. I will also have a playlist of black booktubers that I think you should check out as well and links to everything that gets mentioned in this video as usual. That being said, let's jump into it. The first question, the best book you've read so far. I've read several really good books. So this isn't, this isn't an easy one. I, this is not easy. This is not easy at all because let's see, let's see. Uh, she Who Became the Sun and He Who Drowned the World ended up being a amazing duology that I was not expecting to be nearly as great as it was. Highly recommend everyone should check this out. I also ended up reading Most Ardently, which is a queer Pride and Prejudice remix by Gabe Cole Nova. And I really loved the trans representation and the, just the gay love. It was a lot of fun, really enjoyed this one. How Dare the Sun Rise by Sandra Uringiamana was an amazing nonfiction about a traumatic and harrowing situation that was just written about in such a beautiful way that was just very impactful and surprisingly inspiring and just really well done. Honestly, just so many to choose from. I know it's a cop out, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't pick one. <laughs> so question number two, best sequel that you've read so far? I actually don't think I read that many sequels this year, but I do think Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig is actually a pretty good one to go by, even though it is fairly different from the first book in this series, as we are getting a continuation, but we are focusing on some other characters, which I wasn't expecting, but I ended up absolutely loving it. This is a, a pretty basic romanticy fantasy story. But if it sounds like something that you would be interested in, I would consider giving it a try because I really enjoyed the series. Okay, so for our third question, a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Okay, so for this one, I have a lot of possible ones to go for as well. I think A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Fizal is one that I'm pretty excited about, along with Feybound by Sara El Arafi. Both of these, I have a feeling that I'm really going to enjoy them, but I know they're the beginning of a series, so I kind of want to wait until the next books are available so I can kind of binge read them. So yeah, it's making it difficult to make progress. I'm probably going to read them before that, but that is definitely one of the reasons why I'm holding off. All right, and then my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. First, we have The Dead Cat Tale Assassins by Peter Jelly Clark, which is coming out in August. We have Celestial Monsters by Aiden Thomas, which is the final book in the duology that's coming out in September. Then we have The Dating Countdown by N.G. Peltier. 
that's coming out in September. Then we have The Lotus Empire by Tasha Suri, which is the third and final book in the trilogy, which is coming out in November. And we have The Long-Awaited Heavenly Tyrants by Ziren J. Zhao, which is coming out in December. Moving on to my biggest disappointment so far. A Fragile Enchantment by Alison Saff. I don't know why I thought I would love this book since it is just like a random special edition. I read the synopsis, I seen the original cover art, and for some reason I just felt like it would be totally up my alley. And it was just really boring. <laughs> And so I was pretty disappointed as I was reading this because I was just expecting it to be a generally good time, even if the story didn't do all of the things that I wanted. Like I thought I would still have a good time and that's just not what happened. I was so disappointed with the writing and the pacing and just so much from it, which is pretty sad. Can't Spell Treason Without T is another one I was pretty disappointed with. I ended up getting the pre-order for this and I was hoping it would be like a Legends and Lattes moment and it's fine. I will probably even read the next book in the series, but it was definitely not as warm and fuzzy, feel good, fun times that I was hoping that it would be. It felt a little convoluted and just didn't focus on the cozy romance aspects that I wanted, especially with the relationship. The relationship was a letdown because it was already established. So you didn't get any, you didn't get anything from that, but you did get a, a cute moment at the end. But that's not, I, like, I wanted that for the whole book. So yeah, I was pretty sad about that. And then I guess... One of the big letdowns was So Let Them Burn by uh, Camilla Cole. Now, I'm not going to say this is terrible. I do plan on continuing, but I just wanted so much more from this. And I know part of me is just hoping that some things will, will improve in as the series goes on because I feel like there are some interesting things that are going on, but... This was just a book I was really looking forward to and hoping that I could get some really cool Jamaican inspired fantasy elements that I don't really feel like was there and what was. Feels like it was watered down for white mainstream media in a way that was not very satisfying for me. So yeah. Okay, moving from the negative on to question number six biggest surprise. And I, I already mentioned some of them. She Who Became the Sun was actually a really big surprise because although I was excited about it initially, I think right before I went to read it, I had seen some like bad reviews. And so I was expecting it to be pretty meh of an experience and was just pleasantly surprised by how impactful all of the conversation and commentary that the book was having had on me. Like I, I adore this series, like seriously. I also mentioned that I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed this book as well, especially because I was afraid that I was just going to be like super depressed and sad while reading it after reading the synopsis and realizing the event that it was focusing on. Uh, but it ended up just doing a really good job of telling the story, keeping you engaged and giving like a sense of hope. And I don't know, like, it was, it, it had the sadness and those things, but it was just done really well. And yeah, definitely a big surprise. Now for things that I haven't talked about so far, I ended up really enjoying My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham, which is a sapphic dark academia situation with just like weird elements and spooky scenarios as there's some sort of evil lurking beneath the school that is pulling in these girls and it's them kind of figuring out what is happening and kind of dealing with that. And I've had this for a really long time. I ended up getting it in a book box. I, I believe it has an alternate cover, which I ended up taking off and have not been excited about it. It's just been sitting, it's one of those books on the shelves that you're like, eh, I guess I'll read it if I have to. And I'm so glad I did because I actually really, really enjoyed it and would recommend. Like it was not what I was expecting. It was, it was a good time. And then another book that was a 
pleasant surprise that I ended up really loving was More Than Just a Pretty Face by Saeed M. Masood. And this one, I don't even know. Like, I love this. I highly recommend this. This is a YA and it's it's so good. I bought this a long time ago and started getting not super excited about reading it. I wasn't entirely sure what it would be about and... I was just pleasantly surprised at the conversation and in the direction that it ended up going and just how invested I was and how like it, it made me smile. It made me, it made me happy. It made me angry. It made me root for certain things. And I think it did a really good job and I just really wasn't expecting it to. Like, I hate to say it, but I was, I was expecting it to be just a mediocre YA romance thing. And it was more than, it was more than that. So yeah, another one that I would recommend. Okay. Okay, moving on to question number seven, favorite new author. Okay, yeah, hmm, that is a good question. Okay, so I have more than one answer for this, but for this video, I'm just going to talk about S.T. Gibson. I ended up reading A Dowry in Blood, I think last year or maybe the year before that. But yeah, since then I did read the other two books that she came out with recently, An Education in Malice and Evocation, and the writing for these are vastly different from all of them, honestly. They feel very different, but I love them all. <laughs> I love them all. I really enjoyed all of these books, like a lot, a lot. I was disappointed at first when I started an education in Malice because I was assuming to get the same flowery writing style that we got in A Dowry of Blood, but pretty quickly on, I got invested in the story and was all like, oh yeah, sapphic dark academia. Like I'm on board. I wouldn't say there's anything amazing about it, but it was a fun time. On the other hand, Evocation, I love this book and I'm so excited to continue this series because I'm super invested in the characters and the dynamics and the relationships and all of that going on specifically and I'm really interested in seeing where it goes next because yes and since I've had such a good experience despite the vastly different nature of the like books and the writing I'm excited to see if that continues to be true as they write more things moving forward forward and or if they start to develop a more distinct obvious writing style as things move forward because I feel like they're just experimenting quite a bit and I'm here for it so yeah I feel like this is a good answer okay then we go to a new favorite character and or a favorite you know, book boyfriend or whatever I leave that out I'm not I don't really have book crushes unfortunately it, my brain just doesn't work that way. But in terms of favorite character, I don't have an obvious answer. Oh, that's a cop out. I think maybe we have Vera Wong because she's such a character. Like she's such a character. And I feel like she would probably drive me up a wall if I knew her in person, but I would also still love her because I don't know, there's just something very endearing about her, even though she's a little over the top and definitely like doesn't understand boundaries. <laughs> no book boyfriends or girlfriends are for me. Is there any, like I've read a bunch of romances. Would I date any of the characters? No, I like just like don't care. Yeah, like even the sapphic one. Um, we're just, we're just gonna move on. And our new number eight question is a book that made you cry. I cry fairly easily when I'm reading. <laughs> So I think several books, like I'm pretty sure as long as the lemon trees grow, I'm pretty sure I cried a little bit for this one. Also, I think I also cried a little bit for this one, but I'm not entirely sure if that's true. I'm just thinking it probably happened because it was just like an emotionally impactful book. And it's usually that kind of stuff that makes me cry. It's me being just like, uh -huh. <laughs> that was so beautiful. <laughs> Not that that's always the case, but usually. Okay, 
There are more books down here. It's hard to hear. Oh, sorry. It's hard to see them. Something that made me cry. I guess that's it. There was nothing really obvious so far as I've had in previous years. Because usually there'll be something that's all like, oh yeah, I was ugly crying for that one. I feel like most of my crying so far this year has just been like shedding a couple of tears for a moment here or there. Nothing that stands out that much. So sorry about that. Uh, moving on to number nine, a book that made you happy. I know the answer for this. I'm gonna be honest, this is proving to be harder than I expected it to be. <laughs> Gosh, I feel bad choosing the same book for more than one answer, but I feel like Vera Wong's unsolicited, unsolicited Advice for Murderers definitely was a book that made me like chuckle quite a bit. And at one point I was laughing out loud. So this one just had a fun, feel good, happy time, despite it being a novel around solving the mystery of a murder. <laughs> I did finally also end up reading Heartstopper. And this book made me happy. There were so many smile, feel good moments, even though not everything was sunshine and roses. I feel like overall, the mood was very positive and I'm just really happy with the way that things were handled. So this for sure. <laughs> okay. Question number 10, the most beautiful book that you've gotten so far this year. I've gotten a lot of beautiful books. So this is another hard one. <laughs> I kind of want to focus on ones that I've read. So I'm going to go with Otherworldly by F.T. Lukens for a couple of reasons. First off, I ended up getting this fun special edition copy from Illumicrate as part of a set, but... The art, which I absolutely adore, features the same art on the regular cover. So if this is something that you're interested in, you can get a very similar book with the regular edition, which I love. I really like a lot of this illustrator's work, so really excited that I was able to get this copy. Now we do have some bonus questions, but this one I believe is the last one for the original tag. And that is number 11, books that you need to read by the end of this year. And that one's actually pretty easy where we're sitting. Um, so I've read all of these, but these are all books that I wanna read this year, along with the books on this shelf over here and up there. And then I also have a shelf here of all of the TBR game books <laughs> that I have picked but not completed so far. And I'm hoping to get through all of them by the end of the year. I'm feeling okay, I think, but maybe I'm just delusional because <laughs> Now that I'm like looking at it, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. But I can do it. I can do it. It'll be okay. Hopefully. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> okay, on to our bonus questions. The first one. Just how is your reading going so far? This one should be pretty straightforward. I am quite a bit ahead of schedule, I believe. I'm at 161 books that I've read up until July 1st, right? So not counting any books from July. And my goal is to read 200 books for the year. So I am significantly over halfway at the halfway point. My secondary goal is to read 365 books for the year and I'm behind on that. I don't know if I'm going to do that and that's totally okay if I don't because that's kind of an insane thing to try. But I just naturally was reading roughly a book a day for the first couple of months, which isn't actually true because I'm the type of person who reads a couple of books in one sitting and then I won't read for a couple of days. This whole beginning of July and end of June, I've been struggling to finish books because several of the books that I keep reading, I keep DNFing. Not feeling great about that, but hopefully we'll get back on track because I was doing so well <laughs> beforehand. Okay, on to the next question. Favorite reread? 
This one, I'm not gonna pick it up. It's right here. It's Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby. I ended up rereading this because it was an option for a book club that I was a part of and we were like buddy reading it. And so I really analyzed it in a way that was very enjoyable and really made me appreciate a lot of what was going on and solidified my five star ratings of the book. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I think it did a really good job having strong conversations around different topics through the story. And I, I really, really liked it. That being said, I haven't really reread anything else. I started rereading Most Ardently and A Dowry of Blood and also Tender is the Flesh, but I haven't finished any of those, so I don't think I can count them. Yeah, the only book I reread this year <laughs> happened to be my favorite reread of the year. <laughs> Next one, genres that you've been loving or just reading a lot this year. And this one, I, you know, it's weird. Right now, I'm super into reading just romance because I've been struggling a little bit with my reading. I tend to lean back into romance anytime I'm having issues or I'm really busy or, you know, whatever. And I've had a lot going on in my life recently. So having a easy go-to has been nice. But before that, and in general, I feel like I've been pretty all over the place. So I don't think anything stands out more. Right now, because I've made shifts to romance, I think perhaps that's going to take the lead pretty quick if it hasn't already. Because I feel like everything else is just an equal mix of different things. Next question. Favorite video posted this year? I actually have done a couple that I really enjoy. The TBR games tend to do pretty well and I'm pretty happy with the, the general layout of those. I think they're a lot of fun to kind of do and to showcase the, the game and stuff. Videos that I wasn't expecting that I'm really happy with how they turned out would be the TBR jar picks my read. And then also the like TBR marathon that I did like right after that. I think both of those were pretty good and I'm really happy with how they turned out. And there's also just like some other ones. I feel like I've been pretty happy with a lot of the videos that I've done. Not all of them. I still struggle a little bit and there's definitely room for improvement, but there have been a good deal of gems recently. And the last question for this is favorite book community members. Here's some snippets of some awesome creators that I think you should check out. Okay, before we get into it, these are previews that I created of their existing videos that I had to use my own audio because of YouTube reasons, but I highly suggest you check out their full videos, which I will have linked with each section because you're only getting a snippet of it from me. So please show them some love and let's get into it. We have four amazing booktubers that I will be sharing with you right now. We are going to be doing a pride vlog. I have been wanting to get to these three books for a very, very long time. We're gonna start with Yerba Boy and I. I have no clue what this book is about. I have no clue what Boy Parts about and this is a memoir. So like, we'll see what goes on in there. this book was trying to be, but I don't think it's good at doing any of it. This book is confusing for no reason. It's not even that long. First of all, can we discuss how good my hair came out? This is first day hair. He showed me his passport. It looked real. So like, what do you want me to do? She gets slapped by the mom. And this kind of starts our character going on this journey. I'm fascinated. I still have more than halfway to read, so I'm gonna keep on reading.
This book is a backdoor horror story. I turned 31 on Monday, so to celebrate, all I wanted to do was go buy books. So I'm going to New York with my best friend to go to two bookstores I've been really wanting to get to but haven't gotten to try out. And let's go buy some books. So I ended up grabbing two books from The Rick Bodice and funnily enough, both books are pink. Woo! I can see why it's an international bestseller, guys. Woo -hoo -hoo. Kim Young, born 1982. I honestly think mandatory reading for everyone and every man. Five stars. I loved it and the writing style was also really good. I love how it was like short but packed such a great punch. Oh, and the ending of this book, I was so pissed. And if I look dead inside, it's because I am. Good morning! So, I'm still recovering from finishing the book last night. Um, and I was gonna try and wrap up my thoughts, but I'm still just, like, I have a lot of feelings. Yep, that was, that was your girl being disrespected by this book in the best way possible. A, uh, a very heavy mom reading month in May. What up, moms? Okay, moving on. So, happy pride to everyone, and I'm gonna quickly go through the books that I would like to read this month. I think I'm forgetting one. Oh yes, okay, we got her. Now you see the stack, you see it, right? The stack I read last month, I don't know who I think I am, but I'm hopeful. The picture of Dorian Gray, I read this in high school. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I didn't read, I didn't read shit in high school. I spark noted this book and I don't remember if I liked it or not and uh, not me literally getting an audition notification mid video that's how you know I'm an actor mm. life updates I booked two commercials in May and I'm filming one next week ah, it's like it's a lot it's a lot what's up y'all I need a break from being an adult running errands, going to work. I just need a break. So I'm taking a little mini vacation for five days to New York and I'm taking the island with me. I don't know, I hope like this hotel, these rooms are very close. They're gonna be like, she's talking about aliens having sex. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so basically I think, I don't know what they are cause it, it really hasn't been like told. I would assume they're like, an alien species, and this is the tea. I don't like books with aliens in it. I just, like, I've tried to read books that have aliens in it, like, maybe, like, three times. I hate it every time. I hate it every time, but for some reason, I've read two chapters of this so far, and I'm enjoying it. She's 6'2", she's a black girl, and she's thick. 6'2"? I like her already. I like all of them. So I'm interested to see how their dynamic is gonna be because they just met, but they're both already obsessed with her. And you know what? What can I say? 
I'm already tuned in. Like I think it's gonna be, a good, I hope it's gonna be a good time because the writing isn't cringy. They all seem to have really strong personalities and I wanna see how they mesh. I wanna see where this is gonna go. All right, that is everything. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, include a book stack emoji down in the comment section below. We're going back to basics because it's just that kind of video. Thank you for all of the love and support. Happy reading, and I will catch you in the next one. Until then, bye!